So I finally just went and saw The Force Awakens. It took me so long because I really wanted to see it with my family in theaters. Um, a lot of kids, they grow up and they bond with their dad by like, I don't know, throwing the football around in the yard or something. But for me, um, when I was young, bonding with my dad was all about Star Wars. We'd watch, you know, episodes four, five, and six together. We'd always talk about the characters and our favorites. And then when I got a little older, um, it turned into me and my dad bonding over collectibles and um, just super rare, like Star Wars action figures and stuff like that. So it was really important to me that I waited to see it with my parents. This is the first Star Wars film that I got to see with them, so it meant a lot. I went and saw it on um, IMAX 3D, and um, I was a little nervous about it because my eyes don't usually see 3D very well. Like anything coming towards the screen, my eyes split it into two different things, whatever. But the 3D actually wasn't that bad. I was quite impressed. Anyways, um, as you know, I am one of those very annoying um, Star Wars purists. I don't like people messing with Star Wars. I really wasn't that excited about a new Star Wars either because, I don't know, I still feel a little, a little heartbroken over the last time we got new Star Wars and how excited I was over that. So I tried to keep my excitement to a manageable level so I wouldn't be so disappointed. Luckily, I wasn't disappointed. The Force Awakens had me almost immediately. Well, yeah, pretty much immediately. Of course, you know, when the Star Wars theme song kicks in and then the, the intro starts to scroll, I still get goosebumps. I still, my eyes start to get a little watery and it's just a very, I don't know, it's very an exciting and an emotional moment. And then like right off the bat, just a lot of the shots were this just shot like original Star Wars. Um, I did notice a few, you know, wipes to transition to the next scene. That was very original Star Wars. So it definitely had me pretty quickly just kind of going oh my god this is exactly what I wanted a new Star Wars to be I was so just like giddy the whole time and just so excited and just so happy that finally we got a new Star Wars that I felt represented my Star Wars the Star Wars that I feel is important to me and to my childhood um I don't count episodes one through three to be Star Wars to me um to me those are just like really shitty fan films <laughs> but this was definitely the sequel to our original Star Wars that we had been wanting. Oh, and sorry, I should have said this at the very beginning, but I haven't spoiled anything. But um, but this review is going to be so spoiler ridden everywhere. I'm going to spoil the shit out of everything. I'm not going to censor myself at all. So if you're sensitive to cuss words and <laughs> and don't want to have anything spoiled, then don't watch the rest of this review because I'm not going to hold back. Um, so I did go into it already knowing kind of like the big spoiler, at least the big spoiler to me, which was that Han dies. Um, I think opening weekend, somebody at replied to me on Twitter that just said, at the Rachel, Han Solo is dead. Like, what an asshole. This guy is such a jerk. Everybody go tell him why he's never gonna have friends. So that really sucks. Seeing Han Solo die at first made me very angry. Um, I was just kind of, yeah, more than a little angry. I was very angry. It's like, the hell, J.J. Abrams? Who the hell do you think you are? You're gonna come in here and you're gonna kill Han Solo? No. Fuck you, man. But then... I kind of liked it. I liked the statement it made. Um, and it was kind of hard seeing older Han Solo, you know, kind of <laughs> do the grandpa shuffle when he was trying to run. He's like, I'm gonna catch up to them. It was a little hard seeing him do the grandpa shuffle. That was a little weird. So, um, I was ready to let go, I guess. I think we all kind of went into it knowing that Kylo Ren was going to be um, Han and Leia's son. We all kind of saw that coming from the trailers and just especially a lot of us just having been fans and knowing how the story, if you've read the books, I know the books are all, the books and the movies don't join up anymore at all, which is adds just more confusion. I think we all kind of saw that twist already coming. We knew, we knew what was up. I also pretty quickly knew that Rey was going to be somebody. They're making her up to be Luke's daughter, um, but I know that there's also a bunch of other theories online. Some people think she's like a reincarnated Anakin, which is kind of stupid. Some people think that she's a descendant of Obi-Wan, which is also kind of equally stupid, but whatever. Um, I personally think she's probably just going to be the daughter of Luke, because Luke was married to, um, at least in the books, um, Mara Jade? Is that how I say her name? I think it's Mara Jade. Um, so, yeah. What made me realize pretty quickly that she was going to be somebody important, I mean more important than just a new character in Star Wars, was as soon as she mentioned something about her family, you can't live in the Star Wars galaxy um, 
and have a question about one or both of your parents and not be someone important. Like if you have a question about your parents at all in the Star Wars universe, you're probably a descendant of somebody important. But um, what I don't like about all of that is you've given me this huge universe, this huge galaxy of the Star Wars galaxy, and you try to convince me that everything that is huge and everything that happens in this galaxy is all tied between two families it feels more like a soap opera to me. It's kind of like, okay, well that guy, he's actually so-and-so's son, but he didn't know it. And he always thought he was so-and-so, somebody else's son, but that guy, he then married this girl, but she turned out to be so-and-so's son. And then they got together and they had a kid, but then that child grew up to be this, who then turned out to be the great grandson of that guy. Like it's just a space soap opera, which is a little dumb, I think. I'd like to see a new story with new characters that aren't all intertwined and just the same characters kind of on repeat. That was one of the things that started to pull me out of my just wide-eyed giddiness of watching the new Star Wars was then I started noticing, wait, they're telling me the same story over again. They're just changing the characters, sort of, they're within the same family, but they are basically telling me the same story again that we've now seen kind of twice within Star Wars. Kid growing up on desert planet, thinking they're not anything important, turns out to be a descendant of somebody important and they've got special force powers that they never actually knew they had that is all of a sudden blooming within them and they become the most important thing in the galaxy. And then you have yet another kind of snotty, spoiled kid who's just throwing a big tantrum that just wants everybody to think he's a big mean guy. And now we've got that again. I'm not saying that I didn't like um, Kylo Ren. I think he's an amazing character. I love Adam Driver. He was m so awesome for that character. I'm just saying, how many times are we going to see the same story in Star Wars evolve over and over and over again? Some people online are saying they understand that it's a complete rehash of, of episode four, but they don't care because it's more Star Wars. Yeah, I do get that. I love the way they rewrapped the story. It was rewrapped beautifully. But I wouldn't mind a new story with new characters and maybe a new, you know, coming to greatness that doesn't have to be tied to an original family of greatness. It's just all getting so convoluted and a little repetitive for my tastes. Going into the film, the only real things I was saying that I didn't like was I didn't like that J.J. Abrams changed some core things that I love about, you know, about Star Wars. Didn't like the lightsaber change. I don't think anybody did. But I'm starting to understand it because Kylo Ren really is just rich, spoiled game developer from Grandma's Boy. And he's just throwing a temper tantrum and wants to be a, a bad guy, wants to be show everybody that he's all grown up. But he just keeps throwing these huge temper tantrums, so he's just a child. Um, but he wants to be like his grandfather, Darth Vader. And that's where his, I'm, you know, his lightsabers come from. It's he doesn't know how to build a saber and the whole thing is you're, as a Jedi, you're supposed to build your own saber. So he kind of jerry-rigged it together. It's all kind of like a ghetto lightsaber and it needs these exhaust things because it's not built super well. I don't know, but yeah. So I understand that. I didn't like that he changed, you know, the Empire Imperials to be um, the First Order. Still not sold on the Stormtrooper costumes. It's like they changed it a little bit, but not enough to be fully different, but just different enough to be able to say that they're new. I don't know. I don't know. And then the most of all, they changed the rebels to the resistance. I know they're not the same group, but they are made up of a lot of the same people and they still are using the rebel logo. It doesn't make much sense on why you needed to change that. So, you know, JJ's argument was, remember everybody, this is a new generation of Star Wars. It's a new story, new characters, new everything. And then the movie comes out. It's not really much new of anything. A lot of the same characters, a lot of the same actors, very much the same story. And it still ended with X-Wing pilots flying and destroying the brand new Death Star that's now instead of building a, you know, battleship in the sky, they just gutted out a planet and built it within a planet. It's still basically the Death Star. And they still blew it up just like they did the last two times. <sighs> I kind of was expecting something a little more new, but I guess that's not what we got. I still liked it. I still had fun with it. Um even though I did feel like the story was a huge disappointment. Again, I loved how it was wrapped up. I love how it was served to me. It was super Star Wars. It wasn't at all shiny and lens flary like Star Trek, which is kind of what I was expecting. Um, <laughs> I'm glad I didn't get that at all. Definitely felt like a solid 
good Star Wars film. I do wish there was more Captain Phasma. I would have loved to have seen more of her. They really played her up before the film came out with all the different toys and how much, you know, they just really, really played up that character. It just really wasn't in it that much in the film. So I am looking forward to hopefully more Captain is it Phasma or Phasma? I think it's Phasma, but either way, I do want to see a lot more of that character. Dude, that costume is just badass. And Snoke, mm, I didn't like him at all. I think he looked like a giant Marvel character. I don't like characters um, that are pure CG. I still feel like CG should only be something used to enhance practical effects um, or make up special effects. Um, I hate all CG characters. I hate all CG anything. I think it looks shitty, you know, right from day one of launch. And then it looks even shittier the, the older the film gets. I don't think you can make a timeless classic movie with all CG characters um, or all CG scenes. I just watched Jurassic Park again. Um, and it's been forever since I've seen that movie, the original. And man, those CG scenes were terrible. I mean, the practical dinosaurs, the puppeted dinosaurs, the dinosaurs still look just as amazing as they did the day that movie came out. But the, the CG effects and the giant CG dinosaurs, nah, they look like shit. And if you make a film that relies a lot on CG or has even one CG character in it, 10 years from now, it's not gonna be looking as good. That's why you've got to stick with the practical effects, always, and just use CG to enhance them. But yeah, Snoke looked like a cross between Gollum and Voldemort to me. Speaking of Harry Potter stuff though, um, you guys noticed the Weasley brother who was uh, Kylo Ren's like right hand man, but he was just grumpier and eviler than Kylo Ren. He was really good. I like him. He was really good too. I like him. I think he's got, I think he's got a bigger story that's going to unravel as we go through the next two films. But yeah, overall, I had a great time with the movie. I did really, really like it. Um, the space battle seems really good. Um, oh, the blue one scene though, and the stormtrooper like threw down his shield and then <laughs> tried to like do some kind of weird like, bow staff battle with um, with Finn when he had the lightsaber. That was kind of dumb. But yeah, I thought a lot of the fight scenes and everything were really, really fun to watch. They were pretty cool. I love the scenery, like the scenery shot, especially the big giant crash star destroyer. <gasps> I loved it. Oh, 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 oh no, no, my favorite. The one where I like actually audibly in the middle of the movie theater just went, <gasps> was the downed ATAT. -AT. I love ATATs. I think they are just beautifully designed and seeing just the giant ATAT -AT crashed on the ground and had been there obviously for quite some time was, was just, so beautiful. Everything looked great. Acting was great. Um, I just, I had such a great time with the new Star Wars. I do, again, feel kind of ripped off of the story. I wouldn't have minded a new take on some of the story. Um, an actual continuation instead of just like, hey, history repeats itself. <laughs> um, I think there's a little bit of cop out. Um, yeah, but I still enjoyed my time with it and I'm definitely looking forward to more of it to come. But let me know what you guys thought in the comments. What are some of your favorite parts? What are your least favorite parts? What are you looking forward to the most um, coming up? And as always, I love you guys and thanks for watching.